Today we're going to talk about musculoskeletal exam. So what we're going to be doing is inspecting each joint and then we're going to be palpating it and then um, assessing the range of motion and then the strength under range of motion. So we're going to start with the jaw. And now for the jaw we're actually not going to test strength um, by, by no bite. Don't let the patient bite you. Okay. So first we inspect the joint both sides, palpate it, open your mouth please, and bite down. All right, so we assess the strength of the masseter just by feeling, but we're not actually going to have them, you know, bite. Yeah, that'd be bad. To assess strength of the sternocleidomastoid, mastoid, we're going to ask the patient to turn their head from side to side. So look to the right, look to the left, look up, and down. And then we can also have them do that against resistance. Turn your head, turn your head, push forward, and pull back. One important thing here is that when you do this to the side, they're not pushing this way or this way, but actually turning their head against your hand. Because that's the, that's the real function of the sternocleidomastoid there is to turn the head, not necessarily to push to the side. Next, we do um, shoulders. So the shoulder is formed by the acromium a chromioclavicular joint, the acromium in the front, sorry, the acromium in the back coming off the scapula, the clavicle in the front, and then you've got the um, glenohumerus coming in from the bottom. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to take our fingers, we're going to palpate around the AC joint, and then palpate over the top. Is there any tenderness as I do that? And then you can do that for both sides. You also want to evaluate the level, the elevation of both of their shoulders because they may have a little bit of scoliosis. So we've looked at that. Next, um, we're going to do a range of motion. So what I want you to do is bring your arms to the side. Now, if you go directly above this, patients are going to become impinged. So you don't actually have them do that. So bring your arms back down to the side. That's abduction. That was adduction. Now bring your arms straight up. This is flexion. Bring your arms up overhead. And that is flexion above the head. Now, the last thing we need to test is internal and external rotation. So we're going to ask the patient to do this. Jeez. And you're going to see if you know how close they can get their fingers together. If they can touch their fingers, that's very good range of motion. And the other side, please. All right. So by doing that, we are the patient is flexing the left and then externally rotating. And then she's extending the right and internally rotating. So by doing that on both sides, we're doing flexion, extension, and internal and external rotation at the same time. All right, next we're going to assess strength. So first step is ask the patient to shrug. Um, push your arms out, pull your arms in, bring your arms straight out, push, push out, and pull in. Okay, next we're going to do the elbow. So for the elbow, we're going to inspect and palpate the elbow. Sometimes patients will have a large um, fluid right here, which is a bursitis, and sometimes it'll be red and inflamed. So we're going to palpate both sides of the, of the um, elbow. Now, this part right here is called the lateral epicondyle. This part right here is called the medial epicondyle. You want to palpate both of those for tenderness. Um, if there's tenderness on the outside, that's tennis elbow. If it's on the inside, that's golfer's elbow. So we do that with both elbows and then um, come down to the wrist and inspect the wrist. Is there any tenderness here? Now, um, Carpal tunnel syndrome is caused by the median nerve running through the little tunnel formed by the carpal bones. And so sometimes that can cause weakness and tenderness and tingling. So you can tap on the patient's wrist like this. That's called Tinel's sign. Does that cause any numbness or tingling? The other thing you do is something, ask them to bring their hands together like this and bring the, bring the wrists together. And that's called Phelan's sign. So if either of those causes numbness or tingling or weakness, that would be positive for carpal tunnel syndrome. Next, we're going to assess the strength of the elbow and the wrist at the same time. So make a fist like this, push outwards, push, 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 and pull inwards. Okay. Um, assessing for range of motion of the elbow is important because if a patient can't do this, they can't eat. So bring your hand to your mouth and the other side. This patient is not going to die of starvation. <laughs> Next, we have the fingers. So we're going to palpate each joint individually.
and you can do that both sides and ask the patient to squeeze and let go. And let go is an extremely important command because otherwise some patients may stay there trying to crush you. And one mistake that you should never make is say, squeeze as hard as you can because you've, I've had patients where you squeeze, they're like, eh, as hard as you can. They take, they take it as a challenge to destroy you. So be careful about that. Um, so now we've done all of the upper body and now we're going to move on to the lower body. So for the hips, we're not really going to inspect and palpate the hips, but we are going to assess a little bit of strength. So you need to um, use your hand to stabilize the patient's back and ask them to press up. And then other side. So if you do this without stabilizing, then what's going to happen is they're just going to be trying to lean back against you. So, so pull your knees up. See, it doesn't really work that well. Um, you can also assess hip strength by asking the patient to lie down. So let's go ahead and lie down. And what you can do is have the patient like this, one hand holding on to their ankle, other hand on the knee. And pull your knee up, please. Pull, 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 pull. And then you can come around to the other side and push, 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 push. So you've got to be careful here, especially on an exam table. They can push themselves right off the table, so don't do that. And then you can also check for external and internal rotation. Okay, go ahead and sit up, please. Next, we have the knee. So for the knee, hmm. Any chance you can pull up? There's no chance. No chance. I don't think. Yeah. How? <laughs> Maybe we'll have to use my knee as a model. Yeah, mine's not going up. I don't think I can. Oh, there oh, you go. Oh, I not can't. A, it doesn't work. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. How's my knee model here? <laughs> Let's get a close up on that puppy. <laughs> Okay, so with the knee, you've got medial and lateral. So this muscle is known as the vastus medialis. And what you want to do is you want to palpate above and below the patella and then press down on the patella. Um, some patients have an issue where the patella doesn't groove correctly in the in the uh, tibia and when that happens it can wear down the inner surface of the cartilage and when you press like that if they have tenderness there that can be an issue so we're going to be palpating above and below and then you also want to palpate around the joint line itself we'll do a cutaway to that <laughs> we don't know who's whose knee that is <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, sit down so your face is in it. There you go. That's better. Okay, you're good. All right. So for the knee, we're going to palpate the joint line, starting in the back, moving around toward the front, and we're going to palpate below and above the patella. And then we're going to press in on the patella. Sometimes there's patients who have a wearing away of the cartilage underneath the patella, and that can help to expose that. Now, the uh, knee has two ligaments that go like this, that cross. They're called the cruciate ligaments because, well, they cross. Cruciate is Latin for cross. Huh. Anyway, so when a patient tears their anterior cruciate ligament, it's the ligament that helps keep the knee in line. So we can test for that by doing uh, grasping the patient's ankle and then up here and you pull forward and backwards and if they have a cruciate tear then their knee will actually shear this direction and probably hurts like heck so that's known as a Lockman's test you're probably not going to be doing this on patients as a nurse but you might see it performed if you work in the emergency room or in orthopedics so um, the next thing we want to do after we have palpated is ask the patient to extend their knees and then bring the knees back in. And now we're going to do it for, for strength. So put one hand on top of the knee, other hand like this, push out and notice how I'm to the side so she doesn't kick me in the face. And now this hand is just going to wrap around the back and pull back. So if you do that technique here and here, it's really smooth. I've seen some people do some really bizarro, awkward things trying to assess this way. So make sure you're off the midline so the patient's not kicking you. One hand on their knee, push out, pull in. And you can do that 
really easily and quickly. The next thing is the ankle. So for the ankle, we have the medial and the, the lateral malleolus. So we're going to start in the back, palpate the um, Achilles tendon and palpate around to the front. And then you also need to palpate in the anterior portion. Is there any tenderness there? Mm -hmm. Okay. So now we're going to have the patient um, pull up against your toes. And then I want you to roll your feet around in the other direction. Now we're not going to test strength by putting our hand on the bottom of their foot and asking to push down because later on we're going to have them stand on their tiptoes and that's a much better um, assessment of strength. Now if you have a patient who has a hard time walking or who is very weak to begin with then maybe you should ask them to push down against you, plantar flex against your hand. But for your average patient easier just to have them do tiptoe. To assess for the back, for especially for scoliosis, the patient would ideally have their shirt off. We're not doing that in a video with patients that we're gonna post on YouTube for millions of people, but hey. To do a good exam, you need to be behind the patient, but that's gonna block your view of her back. So I'm gonna do it from the side. You would be inspecting the side here, or the spine here for straightness. And you can also use your fingers to palpate for straightness and go ahead and stand up very slowly, more slowly. And as she stands up, you're gonna examine to see if there is perfectly straight. So that's how you do scoliosis. All right, and I forgot to do the sternocleidomastoid muscle. So we'll go back and do that one. Now I should have done it before we moved camera angles. Now I'll never have the right camera <laughs> angle. Well, why is the camera at a different angle all of a sudden? Nobody's gonna notice. All right. Yeah. 